Welcome back everyone, and for this unboxing should be the last doll, unless I decide to open my holiday Draculaura for a while, if not forever. <laughs> we'll see what, what the Elvira Monster High doll looks like, but basically I gave in to one of my impulses. This is a doll that I was eyeing for a long time. It's going to be the Dracula Collector doll from Monster High. I wanted to go ahead and at least film the first part of unboxing it because um, I did buy this from Mercari from an individual seller because this Collector doll released not too long. Well, it's been a couple months, I think. This released not too long before I rediscovered Monster High. So like I said, I've been eyeing it for a minute, um, but that means that most of the ones online that you'll see are priced higher than what she originally retailed for, which was about $75, I believe. I got her for about 108 after Mercari fees and shipping fees um, were charged, but from the seller I paid. But the price from the seller was $90 plus all those fees. So overall, I don't think I paid too much over. I think $90 is a good estimate of how much she's going for in general online. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the price that I got her for. Um, and I got her completely unpackaged. The person who sold this sold it still in the Mattel box. So it was shipped inside a box with the Mattel box in it, similar to how it was sent from Entertainment Earth, the Halloween Draculaura, how she was sent to me. Um, so I figured let me unbox this really quick so I can give that person a rating and they can get their money. Um, but this is how she came out of the Mattel box. It has this black strip, I'm assuming, which I thought was interesting because you can kind of see the front of the box here. You see her face. Um, Holiday Draculaura was like this too, but she didn't have a strip or anything. But this is intended as a collector doll, so um, this is pretty hard cardboard. So I'm assuming it's just something they want to give you to ensure that you can keep the box closed because I think for this box it flaps open. So... Paper. Had to turn up the brightness. It was really low for some reason. Oh my gosh. It's so cool. Here is the box. It's amazing. We have Mattel. You can't really see it. It's out of frame, but the Mattel logo is at the top on the right. The On the bottom of the box, you can see it says for the makers of Monster High Collector, and then it has 18 plus here on the left uh, because this is a collector doll not intended to play. Um, the photo of the doll is on the front really cool with the Dracula title, and then all of these bats around the box. Super cool. And then her face is also on the side of the box. And I've seen people who have multiple of these collector dolls display the boxes on their shelving. So it's really cool to see how they did this so that you could see which doll it was on the box. Or just based on the box. So it looks like kind of like a book on your shelf. The back says Dracula, Dracula doll. I am Dracula. I bid you welcome. I hope that you found the carriage ride comfortable. The driver can be a bit batty. I trust that you kept your coming here a secret. Excellent. Excellent. Oh my cape. This whole thing paired with these spooky stilettos. The whole look is absolutely to die for. Don't you agree? Please excuse the mess. I think you will find this part of my castle much more inviting for having a bite or two. Oh, listen to the children of the night, what music they make for our special guest. Allow me to pour you a glass of wine. Oh, I never drink wine. You could say I prefer a different type of vein. I mean, vine. Now drink. I would hate for my meal. Ahem, forgive me your meal to grow cold. That's so corny, but it's really cute. I like it. And now, the reveal. Oh my goodness, she is amazing. It's been a couple of days since I got her and I've been thinking about opening her for this whole time. I might have to actually do this off camera. So her box is really pristine and does not actually have any tape on the outside to open her, which is really nice. It looks great. Um, but that means you kind of just have to force these flaps out of their 
little slits. Um, there's some on the bottom as well, which I did consider, but I was so terrified. Of, I was so terrified of tearing them that I just didn't bother with the bottom. So once you get that open, the flap easily opens out, and you can slide her right out of the box, which is great because her box is really nice and very heavy, actually. So I'm definitely not going to throw that box out because it's way too nice. But here she is in the packaging. Scissors are not going to work for this. I'm getting my box cutter. Because these little tabs are so annoying to cut through with scissors. Scissors are just too thick unless you have some of those thin scissors. So the last few pieces that are a little bit annoying are these plastic ones. Um, there's one behind her head, one that holds the bat in, and then there's two rubber bands. One is attached to this plastic clip. The clip, you can just cut the tape in the back and it'll slide right out, but I prefer to keep, keep it in place so I don't have it wobbling everywhere um, while I have her displayed, or what, when I put the box up, really. Um, the rubber bands, you can just undo. So you can try to undo them. This one just won't let go. And then you can actually slide her hair out from under, I don't know if y'all can see that, but her hair was held in place by some little bands like that, and you can just pull her out. Um, oh my gosh, her hair is so soft. Wow, the way it's cut is really unique. It's like triple layer, but I'll get to that all in a second. So she's free. Here's a look at the inside of her box. She's got these cute little bats around it. That was the plastic piece holding her together. That I did have to pull her head off of, which I was scared to do. Um, because it's it's held in through these flaps, but I don't want all this stuff flapping around in the box when I put it back. Um, but then you see here's the print. It's like a broken down mansion or church staircase. It says... I am Dracula. I bid you welcome in spiderwebs at the top. So I really wish they had included a poster or something because this is so cool. I'm also noticing there's no certificate of authenticity that I can see. I'm not sure if this one came with one, but I was under the impression that most of the, the collect collector dolls from Monster High had one. So I'll have to look that up because I kind of did want one. So it's a shame it doesn't come with one. Ignoring all of, all of the little debris that I now have in my filming space, um, here is she is out of the box. She comes with a little bat, her candle holder, and then a base that I really should be opening with scissors. And her base does come with a little attachment that allows you to put her bat on so that you can display her with the bat flying over her head, which I thought was so cool. That's legit something that we really need for all the pets because otherwise they just sit at their feet and I have too many figures. You can't see any of my, of my doll's feet really right now, <laughs> but I believe the stand is a standard Monster High stand. comes with a little black clip. Uh, the base or stand, base of the stand, um, is typical Monster High. It doesn't have anything unique to Dracula, which I thought was disappointing. I think they really should have customized the bases as well for a collector doll. And then this. I guess you can put this, um any way you want, depending on what direction you want the bat to be flying. So here's her bat friend. I really do appreciate that it's more realistic. This looks to me a little more like a fruit bat than a vampire bat, but it's still really cute and scary looking. It's a little spooky. He's got um, sculpted detailing on the plastic for his fur and then the bat wings, obviously. Tiny little feet. Overall, really cute. No head articulation. I don't know why I checked that. I saw a seam line, so I kind of thought maybe they gave it head articulation, but nope. Here's what the bat looks like on the stand itself. Um, it does have this little grip that allows him to slide in through the back part of his body. 
so that way most of his body is actually visible when you display him with the doll. So I thought that was really cool. Here you can see a little bit more of what it looks like in the back, but from the front you really can't tell it's there. And it's in a neat little bat shape as well, so it, it still matches the theme and I appreciate that. And then here is how it attaches to the base. So the way I've done it is I've put the base under her cape. That way, um, I don't have the base kind of clawing into the cape. It was a little finicky and kind of a lot of work, but um, I do prefer how this looks. And then I just put the attachment at the top of the base because it pokes out from the top part of her cape. So it worked out pretty well. And then she also comes with this candle holder that has a snake on it. Really cool. I love the paint job they did on the snake itself highly textured, very realistic, and <laughs> I love how this, you can see inside the snake, the mouth of the snake, and then the dripping wax on the candle itself is really cool too. Just overall a really, really cool piece. And then finally, here is Dracula. She looks super cool. Very simple makeup. Mine, to my knowledge, or from what I'm seeing, doesn't have any major imperfections. She looks great. Love her little spiky nose. Her profile looks really dynamic and spooky. Absolutely beautiful, actually. She has... I thought it was just gray or a smoky eye, but um, it's silvery in the light. A little metallic for her eyeshadow. And then she's got... Um, I'm not sure if that's supposed to be eyeliner, but it's red. And then they also painted the um, corner of her eye, like this bright red as well. And of course her eyes are red too. Her hair is the main thing that interested me when I pulled her out of the box. I think I might have to wash it, do that whole boil wash thing because it's pretty fried from the box. It looks really raggedy. Um, but I love that it's cut in layers so the bottom portion is longest and then there's a mid portion that's a little shorter than the top layer it could also be because of her hairstyle um she feels decently rooted i have to take this little thing out of her head too because <laughs> i just pulled her off the box so she still has that plastic piece but she feels really like she has really thick hair it's pretty nice um, but her hairstyle is really unique. She has this kind of top bun at the top, held back by this amazing bat headband that has, is that a goat? Like a demonic symbol? I can't tell. A bull maybe? Or another bat? It's probably another bat. I mean, it's a bat headband. <laughs> um, but yes, she also has her fangs and her amazing red, deep red lipstick. So when this doll first released, or was um, leaked, or not leaked, I guess um, hinted, because I remember, this is around the time I got back into Monster High, because people were posting the sneak peeks of her doll everywhere. I saw the little, the little sneak picture of her shoes, which are amazing, by the way, held back by this rubber band, which I might just keep on there. Um... Because the doors do open, but I, I saw the picture of her shoes and I thought, oh my goodness, this is amazing. Look at all this. There's details of a bat in the red portion. And then little cathedral windows on the side. And then, of course, the coffin in the back of her heel, which does open. It doesn't have anything in it, I believe, but it was a really cool detail. And then again... The bat detailing in the back is just amazing. So she does appear to have plastic wrapped around her leg. And the reason, I think, is because of her outfit. It's this very nice satiny material. I think that's the... Probably not satin. What is that called? I, I have yet to remember the name of this fabric. But it's not like... It's a little furry. But very smooth and soft. But it is black. Black always tends to stain doll plastic. Like the Midnight Baby from LOMG that I recently bought, her legs came stained from her shorts or her skirt. Um, and she just came like that, probably from spending too much time in the box or even just her leg rubbing up, rubbing up against the black fabric. The dye tends to 
well, dye plastic. So that's probably why that's there. I do appreciate that. I'm probably never going to take her out of her outfit anyway, so that's appreciated. I was getting a little bit afraid that mine didn't bend uh, that well, but her limbs do bend pretty far. She think, I think has the standard Monster High articulation, which is pretty nice. It's very smooth. So she's got knee articulation, hip articulation, like these dolls can bend pretty far. Um, and then she's got arm articulation, obviously. It's a little stiff, probably because of her jacket. And then they have elbow articulation as well. Again, it's a little stiff because her jacket is this material. Um, but she's gorgeous. And as you can see, I believe her entire outfit is two pieces because there is a clip here at the front that allows you to remove the jacket. And then I think this is an undershirt, just standard white. And the cape, I believe, is attached to the jacket. Oh no, I'm lying. I'm lying. So the cape, it looks like, is being held back by rubber bands, but there is an actual band sewed into the, the cape so that it stays in place on her hand. So it's not part of the jacket. You can actually take the cape off, which I'm not going to do because it looks too cool. Um, but <laughs> that's nice to know. I believe her pants and jacket are separate pieces as well. The tail of her jacket, the tails of her jacket are shaped like bat wings, by the way, which is amazing. Um are kind of clipped with these stupid little things again to her pants, but I don't believe they're the same piece. You can actually take them off. So yeah, overall her outfit is about three pieces. We've got the jacket, the pants, and the undershirt. And then she also has the accessories, obviously, like her cape. It's a very soft material. It's not a lot to write home about. I kind of wish they had hemmed it. I'm kind of sick of Mattel doing this. Um, they really don't want to put in the, in the effort to hem their fabric pieces. And the reason I would prefer that is so that it doesn't fray over time. Um, this material doesn't seem like it would fray a lot, but it does look kind of cheap when you can tell all they did was cut it into the shape. But it does, it is cool. It has the little spiderweb pattern on the inside and it's just black in the back. And then the shirt they did hem, which I appreciate. Same with the jacket, with the exception of her tails. Um, but then she also has a little bow. And then this necklace, little cabaton in the middle. I'm not sure, it's kind of hard to see what exactly that necklace is, but it's really cool. And I appreciate the painted details. And then again, obviously I've already gushed about her shoes, which are amazing and are primarily the reason I wanted her. Cause when she first released, I got really excited. And then I saw she was wearing a suit and it looks really good, but I kind of wanted her to have a cool dress, like a really spooky monster high dress. Um, so I was disappointed with her, but over time she kept retaining her resale value at about a hundred dollars. And I kept going back and looking at her and saw reviews and eventually I decided, you know what, <laughs> I do still want her because um, she looks so cool. And her skin tone is this kind of greenish undertone gray that looks amazing. And again, her hair is really soft. I'm not sure what texture it is, but yeah, I'll have to fix her ends. And again, like my other dolls, I'll have to boil wash it. Here's a good look at the back of her cape though. Um, I'm not sure if this indicates that it can stretch. No, I don't think so. I think they just um, stitched it there so it would keep the shape. But the collar is really cool. Very dramatic. And I do appreciate that her hair is not completely straight. It's curly. It's got some texture to it. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I love her. Um, Putting her on the base is going to be kind of a pain though because of the cape. And there she is with all her glory. I'm not going to lie, it's really annoying to pose her on her base with the cape on, um, which I expected. I've had dolls before that had an extra piece like that and it was really annoying um, because the added fabric makes it harder to stick them on the base. Not to mention the fact that you're kind of stretching the fabric by trying to crunch it into the, the claw. So... This is how I ended up posing her. I'm probably going to mess around with her and, um, you know, finalize a pose before I put her on my shelf. But overall, I'm really happy with her. I do, I can see why 
the community was more or less a little disappointed with her. Um, the base is really wonky. I'll have to redo her bat as well. It felt, I was really scared to pose her with the bat actually, because, um, when I noticed the angle wasn't working the way I put her, I wanted to redo it and just pulling on it while it's on the base. I feel like I, I was going to break it. Um, but if you're careful, as an adult collector, you should know to be careful. Um, I think it should be fine. Overall, she's really beautiful, super gorgeous, and I am so happy to finally have her in my collection. Like I said, I wanted her. I didn't really care for her outfit as much as I was hoping she would, you know, have. Because Monster High has always had really out there fashion. The artist in charge of designing all the ghouls and their fashion always had neat ideas in regards to the silhouettes and um, just pieces of fabric he would add to the outfits and details like that. So this was really toned down than what I was expecting with the exception of those amazing shoes. But again, it's Dracula. 100% I, I want her in my collection. And the last time I did not buy a $100 collector doll for Monster High, I ended up really regretting it because I eyed that Draculaura collector a doll that was on Amazon for many, many years for a hundred dollars and I never bought her. And now she's like $500 or something. And I really wish I had gotten her because she's amazing. My biggest gripe with this doll, honestly, other than the base, is just the fact that she didn't come with a certificate of authenticity. I think every collector item sold should at least have something that authenticates it, but it's not too big of a deal. Again, I'm going to keep the box because it's just so pretty and very sturdy. So it'll be good if I ever move and have to take her with me. Um, but other than that, everything else was amazing with this doll. So that's pretty much it. I will leave links where you can buy her, um, in the description. Really, you just have to look on eBay, Amazon, and Mercari to find a listing for her. I kind of waited till I found one that was in the 90 range, um, because they, obviously you have to pay for shipping as well, which was about eight or nine dollars. So range at about ten dollars, um, to have her shipped to me. This particular listing had her sealed inside the Mattel box that the seller had her shipped from, because I'm assuming they bought her straight from Mattel. So they had kept her in the Mattel box and then shipped her to me like that in another box, similar to how the Howliday Draculaura came to me from Entertainment Earth. So she was pristine and I got her for about $108 with um, taxes and shipping costs and all that, which I thought was fine. I know she is going up a little bit in price the other day. Um, Mattel's doing some kind of old stock sale on their website. It's really random and you really have to be there at the right time to get anything. She was available briefly yesterday online, so her price may go down in the reseller market, but I can tell now that Monster High is back in the limelight, it's going to go up as well. So if you want her now, I would highly recommend her. Thank you so much for watching and I will see y'all in my next video.